So uh, Oracle was already in the SaaS field with the announcement today of IAS and PAS offerings. Can we now confidently say that Oracle, as of today, is a cloud-first vendor? So absolutely, yes. Uh, to give you a perspective on this, uh, we launched the SaaS journey a couple of years back. We also launched a bunch of platform as a service offerings sometime last year in Oracle Open World. What we've launched today is 24 new additional services that complement our SaaS, PaaS, and IAS offerings. So really for us, it's a complete offering across SaaS, PaaS, and IAS. We've been cloud first from day one. So seven or eight years back, we started an engineering journey where we redesigned every single application, re-engineered every single application, wrote every bit of code from the scratch for consumption on the cloud. So really, today is a landmark day for us because now that journey is complete. So while you have launched a bouquet of services on the cloud for our customers, uh, you don't have a data center in India. Do you think that could be a stumbling block given the compliance requirements for different verticals, for instance, telecom, healthcare, uh, or BFSI, for instance? So great question. Uh, what we believe currently is that there is a huge appetite for our software as a service, our platform as a service, and infrastructure as a service, even without a data center not being here. There are, of course, a few regulated environments and markets that require the presence of a data center in India, and we are working towards that. Having said that, we still believe that, you know, we've just kind of touched the tip of the iceberg right now in terms of our cloud penetration in India itself with the offerings. We do believe that with these new PaaS and IAS offerings in India, we have a huge market share to gain out here. That appetite, in fact, customers have been coming back and telling us that when are you going to start giving us the very same on-premise database, middleware, big data, analytics, mobility on the cloud. And that's been really our focus in terms of making sure that every single piece of that technology is available to you. We do believe, and, and our results show that very clearly, that a lot of customers have been really worried more about getting the right business applications, getting the right platforms up and running, as opposed to where the data center lies. But to answer your question directly, yes, that is in the plan. However, we do believe there is a large market even before that that we can go ahead and address today. Right, sure. So one of the bottlenecks in the transition to cloud that enterprises face today is on the security front. Right. So while you've talked a lot about uh, how your product is better in terms of pricing as compared to the Amazons and Salesforces of the world, uh, where do you stand on the security front? Because okay. that's one of the main challenges that a CIO faces. So great question. In, in fact, if you really look at it for us, security is not one of the features. It is at the core and heart of everything that we do. Let me give you an example. When you start looking at a data center, and I'll talk about IAS security, I'll talk about PaaS security, and I'll talk about SaaS security. Because I think there is a lot of myth around security itself. The way we address this is right from physical security. So every one of our data centers is a level four data centers. We've got 19 data centers currently operational. All of them are level four data centers. There's physical security, there's biometric security in each one of those data centers at level four, which is the highest that is available in data center quality. The second is, when you look at the infrastructure itself, you must have heard of you know, what was called the heart bleed virus, which infected Unix machines, and nobody ever thought that Unix could, you know, real risk Unix could have a virus attacking it. We've gone ahead and addressed that problem at a hardware level. So we now, in our chips, will have technology that will be encryption technology at a chip level. So it is not you know, an afterthought, it is built into the chip and you cannot go ahead and hack it at any level. So you can't have null pointers and things like that that are usually what hackers end up using. The second part is around the pass part. The first thing is that we do not ever, and we cannot by design, look at customer data. So if you really look at it, customers today, and there are hundreds and thousands of these customers globally, 
they've been using what we saw, what we sell as a database option called advanced security option. They use options called database vault. They use advanced encryption options from us. All of these are technologies that we've been selling for a number of years in customers' existing data centers. It's the same bit of technologies that we use in our cloud. And we never get access to customer data irrespective of whether we run them or service them and so on. On the business application front, the same you know, identity management is a big thing. So for example, if you are a user who are a database administrator, you should not get access to, let's say, a business part of the application, what we call role-based access control. We go ahead and put in role-based access control across our applications and through the stack. So if you really look at it, for us, security is paramount. We have not had a single breach ever in any one of our data centers. So, I mean, and I don't think there's any cloud provider who can come and tell you that. So today, in our 19 data centers that have been operational for a number of years, we are running 600 petabytes of storage. We do 70 million plus transactions every day. We service close to two and a half to three billion customers every day. And we haven't had a single security breach because we look at security right from the hardware to the middleware, to the database, to the application. So that's our entire security, you know, uh, the way we look at it. And then we wrap it up with physical security as well. Sure. So Mitesh, as a CTO, your mandate is to come up with products that are prof profitable. That's the bottom line. So how is cloud better than traditional license and support uh, model, business model, when it comes so, to profitability for Oracle? So let me answer it slightly differently. First of all, uh, we didn't get into the cloud business because we wanted to be more profitable. We, we got into the cloud market, or rather we are in the cloud market because that's what the customers want. So that's point number one. Point number two is, at the end of the day, we have to disrupt our own uh, way of selling and servicing customers. Now, the way I look at it is, in the past, an SMB customer who could not afford our existing you know, license model or could not afford solutions from us, because they couldn't afford a system integrator or could not afford access to technology because they didn't have the kind of resources to do it, or they could not afford to have just database administrators, system administrators, network administrators. Today, cloud has completely flattened that. It's the third wave of IT. If you really look at it, they can go ahead and start using all of this all over again, and they can go ahead and access to the same technology that they didn't have in the past. Now, that is a whole new market that's opened up to us. Secondly, Every single new e-commerce player, startup, they are folks who would typically go ahead and use completely someone else's technology, not even come to us. Today, they come to us because they understand that they can have robust, scalable technology that is available at a very affordable cost to them. So we believe that there is going to be an economy of scale that is going to be there, that is really going to make this profitable. Secondly, we got to understand that customers, as I said, the first point, Customers need this because that's the way they're going to innovate. Now, if we are going to be part of customers' innovation journey, then obviously if they are profitable, we're going to be profitable. That's the way I look at it. Sure. So if we look at Oracle's cloud business, you have revenues of about 2.3 billion US dollars as compared to Amazon and Microsoft, which earn about 6.3 billion each from cloud. So how do you plan to catch up with these two? Okay, so the first thing is that we're not going to catch up it's going to be a huge leapfrog game that will happen. The second point very clearly is that if you really look at some of the players that you mentioned, they only play in a very small portion of the cloud market. And I think the cloud market is quite misunderstood. If you really look at it, it has three large categorizations. There is an infrastructure as a service market, which is really where the two players you mentioned largely play. There is a platform as a service market, and then there is a software as a service market. Now the software as a service market is the business applications market. The platform as a service market is the database, middleware, analytics, uh, internet of things kind of market. The infrastructure of the, uh, as a service market is really the low commodity market. Now yes, it is ease of use there, but it's very low value. So we provide the complete stack of IAS, PaaS, and SaaS. Now, what will happen is that in the past, with the launch of these 24 services that we have today, we could not address a lot of the integration challenges that customers had. We could not address a whole bunch of mobility challenges that the customer had. If the customer had to do analytics you know, at the speed of light, they couldn't do it. 
So today, those markets are hugely open to us, and we believe that we are going to be, you know, hugely leapfrogging the game. The second point that I want to make to you is that we are already the number two SaaS player in the world, and it's only a matter of time that we're going to be number one. Number three, we are going to be very clearly the number one enterprise cloud player in the world, and all of these offerings. The 24 new offerings that we have in the PaaS and IAS market is really to complete that story so that we can go ahead and address every single segment of the market. Sure. Finally, Mitesh, what is that one big differentiator or that one big USP that will attract a CIO to Oracle's cloud offerings? So I'm going to kind of add to your question a bit if you don't mind. I think that really for us the question is what is the one big differentiator that a CIO, a CMO, a CHRO, a CFO is going to start looking at Oracle. Because as I said, our market is beyond just what the CIO looks at. Of course, the CIO is going to be what I would call a partner in crime across all this because it's eventually consuming IT. But I believe that you know it's going to be the value that we're going to provide to all parts of lines of businesses as well as the IT user. So now let me tell you what the differentiator is. The differentiator is very simple. If you really look at it today, if you consumed a cloud from any player in the world today, and it could be name any player, that player, if you wanted to move back on-premise, or if you wanted to integrate on-premise, you had no way of doing it. You pretty much had to leave all the innovation that you did on the cloud, or all the innovation that you did on-premise, and start all over again on the cloud, or all over again on-premise. Let me give you an example. If you bought a piece of CRM technology, a customer relationship management technology, from a cloud provider on the web. And let's say that you went ahead and acquired a company that was in a regulated market. And therefore, you're bound by those regulations and you cannot anymore have your CRM data on the cloud. And you had to get on-premise. There is no way any cloud provider, the biggest of cloud providers, let's say salesforce.com, they're not going to be able to provide you an instance on-premise in your private data center. You'll simply have to start a new project all over again to do this, and that would take a huge amount of time, a huge amount of money, a whole bunch of investments that you made go ori. What we are saying is that if you bought an Oracle sales cloud from us, and if you wanted to move for whatever reasons, the same regulatory reason that I mentioned, on-premise, it's a click of a button. You move from, on from the cloud to on-premise. You do vice versa as well. To me, that's the number one differentiator that we've got. Your investments are protected. Therefore, your costs are going to be low. And we are completely open standards driven. That's the reason why we are able to do this. And the 24 new services that we've launched on PaaS and IAS today really help us do this across the board.